So this big equation that you see here is kind of the general form of all the equations of all the families we're going to be talking about. The difference is where those blue parentheses are. Um, those could change. Different um, exponents could be on the outside. They might change to um, straight lines or it might turn into a radical. So that's going to be how you tell these different types of equations apart. So the most important thing here um, is to talk about what families they represent. So if, if those blue parentheses look like this and they have a square on the outside, that is a quadratic family function. If you have a cube on the outside, it means it's a cubic family function. If you have a um, absolute value bars, it means that it is an absolute value family. And then lastly, if there is a radical over x minus h, that means it's a square root function. Okay, now all the other letters tell you something as well. The rules for the a value, so that's always going to be the number that's in front of your parentheses, absolute value, or radical. Those are talking about dilations and reflections. So if your a value is negative, that means that you have a reflection. If your value of a is between 0 and 1, and we talked about that in 3.2, where if the number on the top of your fraction is smaller than the number on the bottom of your fraction, that means your fraction is less than 1. If that happens, you're going to have a what's called a vertical shrink, um, which, which kind of means that it makes it flatter. And if your a value is more than 1, so you might have a whole number or you might have a fraction where the top number is bigger than the bottom number, then you'll have what's called a vertical stretch. And it, it makes your graph, um, instead of taller or steeper, I think the word narrow makes more sense. So it makes your graph narrower. So that's your A rules. The H rules, so H is always going to be inside the parentheses or whatever symbol your family uses. Um, H is always going to shift you left and right. And this is a little bit tricky because if you're shifting left or right, you always do the opposite of what the sign looks like. So if you see something that's plus H, that's actually going to shift your graph to the left. If you see minus H, it's going to shift your graph to the right. So if you can remember that any time you have a number inside the parentheses or radical or absolute value, it's going to be the opposite direction of what it looks like. The k value is exactly what it looks like. So if you see a plus k value, so a positive number, that's going to shift your graph up. And if you see a minus k, it's going to shift your graph down. We're going to identify the transformations of each equation. Um, it does not ask us to say what the family is, but it's probably not a bad idea. So if you look at number one, um, I see that I have parentheses with a square on the outside. So that tells me that this is a something from the quadratic family. Okay, so now I don't see any a value. An a value would be right here in front of your parentheses. So since there's nothing there, it means that nothing is being nothing different is happening. Now if I look on the inside of the parentheses, this is my h value. And actually I'm going to rewrite up here so you can see what it looks like. x minus h plus k. So I have my h value which is um, negative 3 and remember that when it's inside the parentheses it's opposite. So negative 3 is actually going to shift the graph to the right 3. And then this is my k value. And my k value is the same sign as what it looks like. So this is going to be shifted up 1. My next equation here looks like cubic. I have an a value. That's the number in front of x. This tells me that my graph um, is going to be stretched vertically. So I'm going to write down vertical stretch. And remember, that means that it's going to make the graph look narrower. And then I also have a k value. So this was a, and then I have a k value of minus 1, so that means it's going to be shifted down 1. And then last but not least, um, this is a 2 here. Got cut off for some reason. So I have something from the radical family. 
The radical family is kind of easy to tell because it's the only family that uses a radical. Um, I have a negative here, so that tells me that this graph is going to be reflected. And I also have a one-half, and both of those things are considered my A value, but they do two different things. So the first thing is the negative reflects, and then the one-half is a vertical shrink. So that's going to make the graph flatter. And then last but not least, I have a minus 1. It is in the radical. That's kind of like the number being in the parentheses. So this is going to be an H number, which will mean it's going to do the opposite of what you would think. So H always moves left and right. Um, H, I always try to remember, H stands for horizontal, so left and right. Um, so this is going to move the graph to the right by 1. For number four, this is part of the absolute value family because I can see absolute value symbols. I have an A value, which is a negative, and that tells me that the graph is going to be reflected. And then I have an H value. H is horizontal, so that means left and right, and it's the opposite. So this is going to be shifted left to. For number five, this is part of the radical family, since I can see a radical. I have an A value of two-thirds. Two-thirds is less than one, so that means this is going to be a vertical shrink. Which means that this graph is going to be flatter than the parent graph. I also have an H value of minus one, so remember that is the opposite. So it's going to shift us to the right one. And I have a k value of 3. k values, the signs are the same, so it's going to shift us up 3. And then lastly, this last number 6 is part of the quadratic family because I see a square. And by a square, I mean an exponent of 2. Um, let's start from the beginning. I see a negative. So that tells me that this is going to be reflected. The 2 is also telling me that I'm going to have a vertical stretch. 2 is bigger than 1, so that's why it's going to be a stretch and not a shrink. And remember, that means that our graph will look narrower than the parent graph. Now I have an h value of 4, so this is telling me I'm going to move left 4 since it's positive. And then I have a k value of minus 5, so that's telling me this graph will be shifted down 5. Now we're going to be given transformations, and we want to write the equation that goes with those transformations. So we're going backwards now. So for this first question, um, it has to tell you, first of all, what family it is. Otherwise, you don't know what kind of symbols or exponents to use. So I notice that it tells me this is transformations of f of x equals x squared. So that's the quadratic family. And we also have to remember what that um, standard form looks like. So I'll write it up here at the top again. So a x minus h plus k. And then depending on your family, you might have a, a square or a cube or different symbols. OK, so it's asking us um, to write the equation that is write 5. So remember that this is my h value, down 7, so that would be my k value, and has a reflection, which is the a value. And all it really means is that my a value needs to be negative. So to write this in, I have f of x equals. I like to just go in order. So I like to do my a value first, and then I'll fill, fill in the h and then the k. So I know that it's negative because it's reflected. There isn't a, a stretch or a shrink, so that means I'm not going to have a number in front of my parentheses. It's just going to be a negative. Since this is the quadratic family, I know my parentheses will be squared. And now my, my h value is, is right 5. So if I want to move to the right 5, I have to use the opposite sign. So I'm actually going to use minus 5. So I'm going to have x minus 5. And then I have a shift of down 7. So that means that my k value will be minus 7. For question two, um, it's talking about the cubic family. And then the transformations, it says a vertical stretch of 2. Vertical stretch is talking about a value. 
up 1 would be my k value, and left 4 would be my h value. So I'm going to go in order again. My a value always goes first. So here's my 2. It did not say it was reflected, so I don't need a negative. Now I'm going to put in my parentheses, which will be cubed since this is the cubic family. My h value is 4, and I want to go left 4. So remember to use the opposite sign, so we're actually going to say x plus 4. And then up 1 would be plus 1 for my k value. Next we have, this one is a little tricky. This is what we're talking about. This is what we were given. This is part of the radical family. But now we weren't given the parent function. We were given a function that's already translated. So we're going to transform an already transformed equation. So all it says is to take this equation that I just put the green box around, and we're going to shift it down 9. So down is a, a my k value. So what I'm going to do is look at my, my existing k value, which is 4. And if I shifted down 9, I would subtract 9 from that. So if I did 4 and I subtracted 9 from it, that would give me minus 5. So basically all that's changing here is my k value will turn from a 4 to a negative 5. So here's what my final answer will look like. This does not change, so the square root of x minus 3 stays as is, but now it's going to be minus 5 instead of plus 4. And then the last one, again, we're given a function that has already been had some transformations occur, and we're going to add some more. So this is saying left 2, so that's my h value, and down 7 is my k value. Now if you look at the equation, Right now, there is no h value. It's not being translated left or right. So when we put this in, all we have to do is think, okay, it's going left 2, so I want to do the opposite sign. So that would be x plus 2, and then I close my absolute value bars. When we go to the plus 2, things get a little bit tricky. Right now, it's up 2, but I want to shift it down 7. So I'm going to subtract 7 from that 2, and I get negative 5. So that means negative 5 is my new k value.